Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about this new interesting model called as Chameleon from Meta AI. Let's get started. Right. So, what can this model do? It can actually do text to image. So, essentially, you can give uh, these interesting prompts like Chameleon and Octopus side by side, high quality render, drawing, and professional, and it comes up with this stuff. You can give very, very descriptive prompts of this kind, a plush toy koala bear uh, relaxing on a lounge chair and working on a laptop. The chair is beside a rose flower pot. There is a window on the wall beside the flower pot with a view of snowy mountains, right? So, um, and, and of course you can give other things also like a German shepherd, uh, a German, uh, uh, a black German shepherd wearing a red beret. Uh, so that's that. Uh, and you can actually give very, very interesting and rare intents as well um, about uh, uh, some Armenian uh, uh, structures, you know, called as khachkars, uh, maybe, you know, surrounded by pomegranates in a bright green forest and so on, right? So a cat wearing sunglasses, the obvious ones as well, right? And then, you know, the, the most popular example um, for, from this paper, a small cactus wearing a straw hat and neon sunglasses in the Sahara Desert, right? So yes, you can use this model to do those things. Of course, you can come up with very, very creative uh, uh, imagery of this kind. Um, you know, these three different, um, uh, using these three different kinds of prompts here. Um, so a steaming cup of coffee with mountains in the background, all four of them basically show those kinds of things, resting during road trip, right? Uh, or, or very beautiful images of this kind, which are basically about aesthetic small circular island in the middle of a lake, forest surrounding the lake, high contrast. Okay. Now look at this, uh, these aesthetically really awesome images, right? And, uh, you know, specifically imaginary images of this kind, where you just need to say elephant swimming underwater aesthetic fantasy, right? So essentially it's so um, interesting kind of images that you can generate using Chameleon model. Now Chameleon is a very, very general purpose multimodal model. So you could also use it for, um, yeah, I mean, multimodal tasks where the output is text. So like image captioning. So you could basically give this image and then give an instruction, describe the given image and basically gives you a really nice caption. A man is standing on a beach with a surfboard. Okay. Or you could basically use it for question answering, visual question answering. Given this image, the instruction is a question. What are the people flying? And then the output is kites. Uh, you, I mean, here is another example. So what is the dog carrying? You can actually, uh, you know, get the answer as tick, and then you can actually come up with more descriptive question or other, and a question which solicits a descriptive answer, describe the given image in a very fine detail, and it can actually come up with a detailed model description. In this image, there is a black, there is a, there is a dog holding a stick in its mouth and this grass on the surface. In the background, there are trees and so on. Uh, well, you can also do other kind of tasks, for example, object to image tasks. So you can actually describe the object in text, the objects that you want in text. So and their positions as well. So generate high quality image of a room that has a sink and a mirror in it with bottle at some location. You know, you can actually describe coordinates, okay? Uh, and with a sink at this location and with bed at this location. So it nicely basically takes your locations along with the objects that you mentioned and creates an image out of it. You can also do segmentation to image. So you can actually give the segmentation as input and it nicely creates these different kinds of images which match with the segmentation that you provided. Uh, you could also use it for text guided editing. So you could basically give this image as input and you could say, what would she look like as a bearded man or put on a pair of sunglasses. She should look 100 years old, uh, apply a face paint, right? So all of those nice style changes you could do very easily just by giving text commands and the input image. Or you could do image to image grounded generation, give the skeleton image, uh, and then uh, give a prompt businessman in Sky Street, uh, or, or you know, a boy running on the grass of a soccer field, or a young girl running on mountain trail with white flowers, or beautiful woman walking on the beach at sunset. All of this is possible using the Chameleon model. Now let's try to understand how is it trained. Let's try to understand the data science part of it. So, 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 you know, the idea is that uh, uh, in the past uh, one or two years, diffusion models have become very popular for image generation, right? Because there's strong performance, very good accuracies, and modest compute cost. Now, on the other hand, there is another branch of uh, another line of work in terms of image generation, and that's basically token-based autoregressive models. They also produce good results. However, they are very, very compute intensive. Uh, in fact, their results are somewhat uh, better in terms of image coherence, but then, you know, they are compute intensive. So the idea is that can you really come up with models which are very, very efficient and performant in the sense efficient and also have very good results. 
And the answer uh, is uh, Chameleon, uh, which basically tries to combine retrieval augmentation. So you know, retrieval augmentation idea along with contrastive decoding, uh, um, a special kind of decoding strategy, so as to come up with the, both an efficient as well as high performance model. So let's talk about how is the Chameleon model pre-trained? Well, it's pre-trained using uh, licensed images from Shutterstock. So recently there has been a whole bunch of, uh, uh, you know, uh, issues, both legal and ethical issues around uh, the usage of images from the general web, which are not really licensed in that nature. So therefore here, uh, special care was taken to only use licensed images for pre-training. Uh, while pre-training, you know, of course, images and uh, text both has to be uh, tokenized appropriately. So they basically used tokenizer borrowed from the paper, make a scene paper, right, where they have encoded every uh, 256 cross 256 image using 1024 tokens, which belong to a total vocabulary of just uh, around 8,000 tokens. Okay. Uh, the text was basically encoded using a special tokenizer learned on OPT data with a vocab size of around 56,000. Uh, so your inputs are going to be multimodal in nature because uh, remember this kind of a model is a, a, a transformer based decoder only model where the input could be multimodal the output could also be multimodal so the, therefore the multimodal input is going to be encoded like this you basically will have image uh, you will have text which is basically tokenized and given as input and text and image are separated using a special token called as a break token and then there is an image here uh, which is basically tokenized and given as input as well now, uh, remember, while pre-training, you also do retrieval augmentation. And what you want to do is to basically take your query, which is a multimodal query, and then go and match with an index uh, and look up the multimodal uh, memory so as to retrieve uh, those multimodal documents that match the best with the query. So when you get those documents, you can actually uh, retrieve up to three uh, relevant uh, and diverse multimodal documents. So, you know, if your input text and input image is like that, you can, of course, also take those three documents that you uh, retrieved and, you know, take the first documents, text and image, put that here, second documents, text and image, third documents, text and image, just append everything together and give it as input to your Chameleon model. Okay. So here, for encoding purpose, uh, uh, for multimodal documents, encoding them, they basically used a clip, um, so clip encoder, uh, VIT B32 clip encoder, both for image and text. So if you have a multimodal document, you divide into text part, image part, uh, do the clip encoding using clip, in, uh, clip text encoder, clip image encoder, and then you take the average embedding and you store that embedding in your, in your index. They use uh, maximum inner product search, MIPS, to basically do the match between the query and um, uh, whatever is stored in the index. Okay. Um, now, uh, to select the best documents for retrieval purpose, they depend on three important factors. Relevance, so of course, whatever is the dense retrieval score that is, of course, used to find relevant documents. However, they also prefer a multimodal document or an image-only document or a text-only document. So that's modality. And the third factor that they incorporate is diversity. So basically, they want to have documents which are diverse enough. So you would not want to have a document which is so similar to query that it does not really add much value or already similar with the existing, with already retrieved documents. Right? So one way to enforce the uh, uh, redundant, uh, you know, diversity is to say that hey, I'm going to only take documents which have uh, a similarity score less than equal to 0.9 with respect to query, and also, you know, you can basically not give the full query. You can do query dropout, basically saying you can drop out 20% tokens from the query and then do the search, uh, MIPS search, right? So that's that. The objective function for pre-training is basically next token prediction, um, and the way they encode various problems is as follows. So let's say if you have a uh, a caption and you have an image. So image of a chameleon and the caption, uh, and you know, there is an image as well. So the caption is image of a chameleon and uh, you know, the image is present. So the way you would do this is to basically uh, uh, put it out like that, image of mask image. So you basically, uh, you know, uh, replace uh, or rather mask out a particular words, so let's say chameleon. And then you essentially add the special token called infill and then put out a chameleon masked out tokens towards the end, right, towards the end. So, and then you do auto regressive, um, um, you know, modeling on top of this. So next, next, next token prediction loss. So in some ways, what you're trying to do here is to basically predict this mask, what should be filled in the mask by basically predicting rightly the H million part rightly. Now, for the data, which is basically caption to image kind of prompts, you essentially provide just image of a chameleon and you try to predict the image tokens. While for uh, you know image to talk caption prompt, you basically um, mask out part of the caption and then you ask, uh, um, you know, and then you end it up by saying infill as the token and you expect the model to be able to come up with the words a chameleon uh, so as to incorporate uh, the, the, the caption based loss. 
So uh, while masking, you have to ensure that you don't mask the break tokens because you know you don't want to really uh, mask out the break tokens and then predict them based on um, uh, yeah. You know, uh, I mean that, that that that's just in unnatural to mask out break tokens, right? Uh, the model is basically a decoder only transform model with a max sequence length of 4096. Okay, so that's that. So now uh, we have understood how pre-training is done, but then how do you do uh, text to image decoding, right? So how, how do you do that decoding part? Now, of course, you can do decoding in several different ways. Uh, here, uh, they particularly perform what is called as contrastive decoding. So in contrastive decoding, uh, uh, the way it is performed is, uh, is as follows. The uh, so uh, of course it is auto regressive decoding. So you've already generated uh, you know uh, one to i minus one tokens, and you want to generate the token at position i. Um, that uh, way to generate the contrastive decoding. Uh, I mean you know the probability with which you will sample a token uh, is dependent on this on this factor. So what is this score? This is basically log of uh, uh, probability coming from some expert model divided by probability coming from a, a approximate model in that census. Okay. So, uh, however, this this token Y I can be sampled only from uh, you know a particular set called V. Okay. So the idea is as follows. You know, you basically go to some. Uh, you have two models. One is an expert model, and one is an approximate or mod, approximate model. You essentially uh, go to the expert model and uh, you know uh, you take the highest probability token and uh, then you take all of those tokens which are within which have probability within alpha factor from the highest probability token okay, so it's basically like taking if the max token is basically let's say 0.9 highest probability has probability 0.9 and your alpha is 0.8 then you would take all those tokens which have probability from 0.9 to 0.72 and uh, you know you will basically uh, sample from those uh, whichever uh, and uh, or rather you compute the score for all of them and then you will sample uh, from that probability distribution okay so uh, in this particular case if you were to apply contrastive decoding for chameleon you know the way you would do this is to consider uh, text conditioning as a strong uh, model while no text conditioning as a weak model so text conditioning basically just means that you don't mask out anything from the input, while weak model basically would mean that you would use the same chameleon model, the pre-trained model, but with some masking, some random token masking. Okay, that's that. Now they actually change, tweak this particular thing a little bit, and they call it contrastive decoding top K. So they basically say that, hey, let me not just uh, use alpha uh, times the maximum guy, but they basically say that, let me take the kth maximum guy and then take all of those as candidates which are within an alpha factor of the kth maximum guy. So let's say uh, if you basically uh, took the expert model and then the highest guy has uh, probability 0.9, you know the kth highest guy has probability 0.8 and your alpha factor is 0.9 then you would basically say let me take uh, anything that lies from 0.9 to 0.9 into 0.8 which is basically uh, uh, you know uh, uh, yeah, uh, or your alpha let's say is 0.7 right so you would take anything from 0.9 to 0.56 so that basically uh, you know that that range and uh, again for that one you will still compute this factor and then sample according to the distribution given by that score so instead of taking the largest probability, we take the kth largest probability. That's the difference in this contrastive decoding approach. Now, you know, how do the results look like? So the zero shot results on MS Coco um, uh, task, uh, you know, MS Coco um, uh, uh, task look like that. So these are results for the FID scores. Uh, remember, lower the better. So what you observe is that several models have been compared, diffusion-based models, encoder decoder models, autoregressive models, and so on. So what you observe is there is DALI here. There is also uh, you know, stable diffusion models that you see here. And then there is also the recently proposed party model. And what you have is Chameleon model. In fact, they train three different sizes of checkpoints of Chameleon model, 350 million, 760 million, and uh, 7 billion sized models, right? And what you observe is that, um, uh, you know, uh, Chameleon model in general scales way better, right? So compared to DALI, for example, uh, you know, 760 million model comparison in the DALI, you know, it has way higher FID score compared to what is possible using the Chameleon model. Again, remember, these are zero shot results. These are all zero shot results on, on MS Coco data set. Uh, now, um, of course, remember that lower FID score is better. Lower FID is better, right? So uh, in the table here actually shows comparison with many other models. Some of them are retrieval based. Some of them are non-retrieval based. In fact, here you see uh, Chameleon models also expressed in terms of whether it is retrieval based or not. So zero essentially means not retrieval, right? And then uh, two basically means two documents retrieved in that sense, right? And what you observe here, the biggest uh, observation is that, well, on this data set, you have like 4.88 FID score achieved using Chameleon 7B model with two retrieved documents, just a 370 million uh, data set size for pre-training and a 7 billion model. Now, 
If you compare it with, uh, uh, so this is basically state of the art score. This is the best score that one can ever obtain on this data set. And if you compare it with the, the current best model, uh, part time model, you know, this is way smaller in size and also trained on way smaller uh, pre training data set. Um, that's that. And if you, uh, yeah, I mean, for other observations are that uh, Chamillion models are way better than other retrieval augmentation based models like KNN diffusion or reimagine. Uh, you know, uh, all of them are actually worse compared to the Chamillion model. Um, well, yeah, so this was about pre training, but then you can actually do fine tuning as well. And what they did was uh, uh, they fine tuned on a large number of tasks. So they basically fine tuned on data which corresponds to. Uh, tasks which interleave text and images, for example, text guided uh, uh, editing. So you have an image here, you have text here, edit the following uh, image following uh, the text instruction, and the instruction is make her an alien. So there's task instruction, there's an image, and then there is a specific uh, instruction to do the editing, right? And you get the outputs of this kind. Now, there are also other tasks, like for example, grounded generation, image to image. So for example, there's a task saying make high quality image from children's scribbles of this kind of scribble, right? And then you also give some sort of a caption so as to help uh, ground that thing. Uh, I mean, so that the output is nicer, right? So the common kingfisher and so on. So the output generated is like this, right? A very realistic image, right? Uh, uh, or you could basically give skeleton image and then say a woman practicing yoga, and then basically it generates a, a realistic image of a woman practicing yoga on a cross legged uh, uh, sport mat. Other kinds of tasks include text to image tasks, and then yet once in yet others include image to text tasks. Uh, um, uh, so uh, text to image tasks could include, uh, you know, uh, given a full text description, generate images with appropriate object positions and so on, or generate images uh, with some text on it uh, and uh, with some style of uh, font and color and so on. OK, uh, yet other tasks could be caption generation uh, uh, or, or question answering or uh, reasoning and so on. OK. So in fact, they fine tuned on a very large number of data sets and large number of examples available in those data sets. So there is instruct pix to pix data set for uh, you know, um, image editing in that sense. And as you see, so many examples, and I'm not going to read through all of them, but what you see is that there's a large variety uh, of these image focused data sets uh, and uh, so many uh, number of instances, large number of instances actually. Right? And then there is also a large variety of text focused data sets on tasks like image captioning or uh, question answering or you know visual question answering of course or uh, you know knowledge based visual question answering and and, and, and you know uh, reasoning based question reasoning based uh, tasks and so on okay so they fine tuned on so many interesting tasks and uh, that is how they were able to come up with a model which could actually uh, do the kind of things that i mentioned in the beginning of this video okay in fact, their model, they actually compared across several, several test data sets on image captioning, on visual question answering, on uh, uh, many, many other interesting tasks, special tasks and so on uh, with the, the otherwise popular Flamingo model. And they basically show uh, that their model actually can give very comparable, uh, if not better scores. Okay. So that's that. Uh, now, uh, in summary, in this uh, uh, video, I talked about the Chameleon model. It is a retrieval augmented token based decoder only multimodal language model right so it's a transformer based decoder based uh, uh, multimodal language model it's a retrieval augmented language model which doesn't retrieve too much i mean you know just two or three examples generally right but it is very efficient and flexibly generates and infills text and images you know input can be multimodal output can also be multimodal that's the interesting part right uh, it basically involves these four interesting things. It involves, in fact, two stages, a retrieval augmented pre-training stage, and then there is also this uh, fine-tuning stage, so multitask supervised fine-tuning stage. So in the retrieval augmented pre-training stage, they basically included a diverse large-scale shutterstock data set of licensed images, while in the multimodal supervised fine-tuning stage, they actually involved a whole bunch of variety of these uh, you know, image-focused data sets and text-focused data sets, supervised fine-tuning data sets. Um, while decoding, they actually do contrastive decoding uh, with the top key kind of an approach. And um, overall, they show very good results, state of the art. In fact, zero shot MS Coco FID scores of 4.88. And uh, even for supervised fine tuning, um, with uh, uh, you know, they, they basically show that they obtain uh, comparable results, uh, and in some cases, better results compared to the Flamingo model. Okay, hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.